morning. How's everybody doing today? Awesome. All right, all right. Well, I'm, I'm going to stall for just a moment, okay? Because they've got a few technical difficulties they're dealing with this morning. And, uh, uh, but hey, listen, we are glad you're here today. How many of you guys know that the Bible tells us that today is the day that the Lord hath made? And our responsibility is to rejoice and be glad in the day that we have today. And I told Donna when I walked out this morning, I walked out, man, and oh, it was so nice. I could smell the, the rain. That's, y'all, did anybody else get that at your house this morning? You could smell the rain when you walked outside. I love that smell. That's always so good, you know. And uh, uh, it reminds me like of, um, of the goodness of God and the presence of God in our lives many times because I, I thought about many times as a kid, that was one of my favorite smells is to smell uh, you know, that fresh rain that kind of like washes things and cleans the, the, you know, and you can smell, I think you can like smell the dirt getting washed off of stuff kind of, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. That smell that's just, this a, a fresh rain. And uh, so I think about that a lot of times and I think, I thought in my life, man, that is exactly what God does when he comes into our lives and, and like he cleanses us and he cleans us up a little bit, you know, and, and uh, there's a, have you ever noticed when somebody is like torn up and they're all jacked up in their life and, and they, they come to Christ and then all of a sudden it's almost, you can tell that they, yeah, like you, Rod, like for instance, and, 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 and it's like they've got a different kind of an essence about them or a different when you're around them, it's like they almost, it's not, there's not a physical smell, but there's something that's sweeter about them, something sweeter about them. And uh, so uh, God is good all the time. And, and um, hey, if, if you guys will, let's go ahead and stand to our feet and let's worship together this morning. Father, we thank you for your presence that's here today. We thank you, God, for the opportunity to come love you this morning and worship you this morning. We thank you for the words that are going to come forth. And we thank you for the body of Christ, God. We thank you for what you're doing in the earth. And we really thank you so much for what you're doing right here at Atomic Church. We love you this morning, Father. And we thank you for being so, so good to us. And you're good all the time too, Lord. We know that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Spirit was moving over the waters. Spirit, come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. So calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. Calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you fill the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will fill me. As the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit, come move. Us. Come rest on us, come rest on us, as the Spirit was moving over the water, Spirit come move over us, come rest on us, come rest on us, the fire and wind come and do it again, open up the gates, let heaven on in. Rest on us, come rest on us, and fire and wind, come and do it again, open up the gates, let heaven on in, come rest on us, come rest on us, to so calm down, spirit when you move you make my heart pound, when you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving, I'm here and I know you will fill me Come down Spirit when you move you make my heart pound When you fill the room You're here and I know you are moving I'm here and I know you will fill me I know you will fill me Lord 
make my heart pound when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound when you fill the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will be calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will be. Feel the room. You're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me calm down. Spirit, when you move, you make my heart pound. When you feel the room, you're here and I know you are moving. I'm here and I know you will feel me.
going to say really, really quick, just really, really quick, can we just give like another like shout of praise and like a, a high five hand clap for these two girls right here? These are, you know, our, our youngins in the church and the fact that they just sang that with so much heart and so much passion. I feel like a mama bear right now. I mean, I know you're actually the mom, but I kind of feel like a mama bear and I'm like, I'm so proud of them. So anyways, yeah, just good job, you guys. And I'm so glad that you guys, you know, are here and we love you guys. has to bow. Sickness has to bow. And at the name of Jesus, every single worry, every single concern has to bow. That we just declare that this morning, that what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. And we worship you, Father. We worship you, Jesus. Have your way in the rest of this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. The name above every name is that we're going to continue to declare that out this morning. We're going to put a couple seconds up here or minutes, whatever, up here on the board. Say hi to your neighbors. Say hi to someone you haven't met before. And let's get ready for the word.
Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing today? All right. We're glad you're in church today. It's good to see some folks in here today. I haven't seen a couple of y'all in a while, and it's good to see you. And, and um, Hey, my name is Mark. I'm the lead pastor here at the church. And uh, if this is your first time here, we want to welcome you here today. Let's give all of our first-time attenders a good Atomic Church welcome. We're glad you're in the house today and hope you receive something great from God. Um, I want to just go over a couple quick announcements here. How many of you guys know that we have a good web page? We actually have a, good, a great website and a web page. It's atomicchurch.com. And uh, we want to encourage you. We're, today is going to be a day that we're going to kind of back off, begin to back off on our announcements during church. We're going to try to point you guys more and more and more towards the website. So if you'd like to know what's going on, and we have activities going on every week of, of the month and every month of the year, uh, there's something going on here at the church or around the church or something associated with church functions. And if you would like to know more about that and you want to find out what's happening, you can go to atomicchurch.com. Click right on there and you can click on events on atomicchurch.com and you will find out what's happening here. Pastor Kirk, uh, Sarah keeps that schedule up to date. And the other one thing I want to mention real quick is next Sunday um, in the afternoon, what time is it? Do you know Pastor Sarah for sure yet? We, we think one o'clock. Um, we're going to have an all-family, all-church bowling fiesta. Yeah. How, how many of you guys have been with us when we went to the bowling alley? Well, let me say this. There's a man back here in the back corner. His name's Alex. You want him on your team if you go bowling. Yeah. Uh, who, Francis? Yeah. yeah. Between the two of them, one or the other, you want them on your team. And you don't want me on your team. So, <laughs> or Pastor Donna, and uh, but uh, we will we will communicate with you guys through the week on exactly when that time is. We kind of we had planned on going out to Santa Ana, the bowling center out there, and they've changed the rules a little bit because of COVID. Now they're at 21 or older out there, so we're finding another bowling alley. So y'all be patient. We're going to plan on going bowling next Sunday, and that is really really fun. It's a fun time for everybody. We can bring the kids and the families. And it's it's just a great time. So hopefully we'll see you there next Sunday after church. And um, I want to do this. I want to show you guys. I want to I talk to y'all about your tithes and your offerings right now. And I, I, I don't want to do too much talking. Do you guys have that, re, uh, that video ready back there, Steve? If you will, you guys can turn your attention up here to the screen. And I uh, want to show you a video here real quick. Maybe. Probably. <laughs> Money is a necessary part of our lives. With it, we buy food and clothing, we pay our bills, and we spend it in countless other ways. But when the Bible looks at how we spend our money, it skips right past these spending habits and looks instead at our hearts. In Matthew 6.21, Jesus tells us that our hearts belong to the thing we treasure most. He then warns us that it is not possible to serve both God and money. This is why it is important to take time and reflect on what the top priority in our hearts is. So let's look at three questions we can reflect on to ground ourselves in the Bible and really take an honest look at who or what our hearts are serving. First, what does my spending say about what makes me most happy? We all spend our money on whatever we think will bring us the most joy. This means that if our joy is really coming from God, then our spending will show it. But if other things have stolen our heart, we'll find that we have few resources left over for helping the cause of the gospel. Number two, does my spending suggest I'm collecting for this life? The Bible often reminds us that we should store our treasure in heaven where it will never be lost. So when we're tempted to collect for a few short decades here, we need to be reminded that only money invested in the kingdom of God will last. And number three, is my spending explicitly supporting the spread of the gospel? Jesus is coming back, and if we truly believe this, we will do everything we can to see our friends and family come to know Him. We can't buy conversions, but a generous heart can be a powerful example of how our trust is in God and not our money. And oftentimes, this kind of generosity can open the door to Christ-centered conversations that we never thought possible. No one is going to be perfect when it comes to managing money, but when God is truly at the center of our hearts, instead of the desire for more money, 
We will be happier and more generous because our hope is secure in Him. Amen. All right. Well, hey, listen, um, what do you guys think about that video? It's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty good. And, uh, you know, I, I, we've thought about this. Pastor Don and I have talked about this many, many times. Um, you know, we were told a long time ago that you could probably open up somebody's checkbook and see where their heart is. You can see where their heart's at. And um, we, we've thought about that before, and we thought, you know what? If God was to look in my checkbook, what's he going to see in my life? And, and, and what we determined a long time ago is that he's going to see that we're going to be generous. Generous with people, generous with the church, and just a generous people, right? And um, so uh, generosity is a key, one of the key ingredients to walking actually in abundance because the Bible says that as a man sows, he's going to reap. And the actual generosity comes before the receiving. This is the hardest part. It's a kingdom principle that works. And, but generosity is a heart issue. So you get your heart right. You begin to give of whatever it is that God's provided for you in your life. You'll find out that God will cause increase in your life in that way. Right? And so, so there are four ways that you can give uh, here at Atomic Church. If you can get those up on the screen there, for, if they are available, you can give online at atomicchurch.com. You can uh, give in person. There's a box in the back back there with some envelopes if you'd like to do it that way. Um, you can also give with text to give. Uh, and then what's the other way? There's one other way. Or you can give by mail. Mail. How many of you guys love to give, send checks in the mail nowadays? Not very often, right? We may take that one down, not even be an option. Go ahead and move into the 21st century, right? <laughs> well, here's what I want to do. I want to have Pastor Donna pray over your tithes and offerings today, and then we're going to do the confession, and we're going to keep on cruising today. How's that sound? All right. Father, we just thank you that you give seed to the sower. We thank you, Lord, that our hearts are torn towards you, and those that aren't able to give today, Father, that you would increase them, that they would be able to give, Lord. We know it's not about us, but it's all about you and growing your kingdom. So we thank you, Father, for everything that you give us because we know that every good gift is from above. We praise you and we give you honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome. You guys, if you will, stand with us one more time here. Let's do this confession together. Some of you maybe haven't been here in a while or maybe it's your first time. We all like to grab hands. If you don't feel comfortable, that's okay doing that. And uh, be, be careful grabbing Bobby's hand, this guy up here. He's known to be a biter, like... And, uh, but we want to say this confession together. Let's say this like we mean it. Come on, you guys. I want to hear y'all. Come on. Say it from the bottom of your heart and like let it rip, okay? Come on. Let's all say it together. Say, I'm here, here on purpose because I have a purpose. My heart is open and my mind is ready to receive because God is not finished with me yet. My best days are right in front of me and I have victory in my life. Because Jesus lives in me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, that's how you do it right there. That's how you do it. Well, it's good to have everybody here today. We're going to continue with the fourth part of the sermon series, Paths. And this will be the last, um, the, the last sermon in this series, part four. And uh, before I jump in there, though, um, I've got a joke for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That really felt good. I have one person that likes the jokes. It's awesome. Why did Adam and Eve do math every day? Because they were told to be fruitful and multiply. What's that, Ron? Best one yet. Best one yet, the man said. That's coming from a man that knows that he, he is, you can see what he's wearing today. He is part of Cowboy Nation. And uh, <laughs> did y'all watch the game last week? Anybody watch the game last week? The Cowboys got beat barely at the very end. And... Uh, but man, did they ever play good. This is our year, isn't it, Rod? Come on, Cowboy fans. This is our year, right? <laughs> oh, I love it, man. 
Well, I want to talk today with you guys. Um, if, you, if you didn't catch one of the first three parts, you can check those out online or on Facebook. They're, they're there. And uh, I want to talk today about part four. And, and today we're going to talk about uh, the path of the blessed is the title of this sermon today. The path of the blessed. And there is a pathway on the earth uh, that biblically you can read about and study out. And you'll find that there's always going to be these common things uh, uh, that people are operating in in their life and ways they're rolling on the earth um, that causes the blessing of God to seem like it just comes to them some reason. There's some reason for that. And, and they're on a path, and, and it's interesting. A lot of people think, well, you're just blessed. I don't, I don't know why. You're just lucky. Well, I can tell you, biblically, biblically, there's no such thing as luck. And, and um, we, we consider that to be the blessing of the Lord when whatever we put our hand to prospers or we have favor and God opens doors for us and he leads us and directs us on these paths. And today we're going to be talking about the path of the blessed. And how many of you guys know that there are multiple paths that you can choose in your life, right? I mean, every day we're all faced with with these different paths and these different opportunities and choices that we can make. And here we are, we stand right in the middle of this, and sometimes this is what has happened to me, and it may have happened to you before as well. I found myself in this spot up here, and I almost get paralyzed right there because I'm looking around going, well, what, which way do I go here, you know? And I end up not going anywhere. And I just kind of stay in the same place. There may be somebody in the room today that you've been staying in the same place. And you may have this issue going on in your life that you have all kinds of choices around you to make, but right now you're kind of stuck somewhere, not knowing which way to choose. I counted uh, up here, there are 16 of those paths that you see, or those roads up there in that graphic that you're looking at. There's 16 of those. And I was thinking about that, and I was thinking for my life personally, <clears throat> excuse me, I have... Um, Quite a few things going on with business. I'm just moving over. Let's get out of the church just for a second, just like in a personal realm. I have quite a few things going on with my business right now, and I can tell you that today I'm going to rest and not do any of it. I'm going to do nothing. I'm not going to have anything to do with it today on this Sunday. Uh, but come tomorrow morning, I wish I only had 16 decisions to make. Oh, right? You guys know what I'm talking about? Do you guys have things going on in your life where it'd be like you have a lot of things going on and life is busy? It could be with your kids. It could be with the job, the family, the church, the, um, you know, your health, um, all kinds of stuff going on. And, and there's always all these things. And here's what I found, found out and what I, I've noticed. It's almost like at the, um, at the end of each one of those roads, this is what I find in my life. There's something at the end of that road down there, and, and, it, and it has almost all of those 16 roads. They all have, they're standing down there, and they're yelling at me. They're going, hey, come this way. And then they go over here to path number two. No, don't go over there. Come over here. Or path three. Y'all know what I'm talking about? All these voices trying to draw my attention to them. And um, I found for me that uh, I find it very interesting that what happens in my life, if somehow I can figure out which one of those to travel on and which voice to hear and to listen to and pay attention to and which voice to go towards, if I can figure that out, I have a tendency to get single-minded. And I, it's like the distractions all go away. And all of a sudden, for me, it's like focus comes. And clarity comes because I become single-minded. And I get on a path, and I pick a path. Have you guys ever picked any wrong paths before? Boy, that was quick. <laughs> well, see, I haven't, so. <laughs> I think we all have. There's a saying that says this, and I still think about this up here. It, there's a saying, I can't remember the guy's name, but here's a quote, that if you don't know where you're going, any road or any path will take you there. If you don't know where you're going, hey, if you don't know where you're going, you can just go down to any of those. You'll be good. 
It'll take you right to where you're going. So if you don't know where you're going, any path will take you there. How many of you guys know that the world itself has many choices or many paths that it actually puts right out in front of you in life? The world offers all kinds of stuff to do, right? Okay, uh, we can agree on that. The world says, now check this out. We're still talking about the path of the blessed today. But the world says you can have, now check this out, whatever you want. Whatever you want, you can have it. Anything you want. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what it is. If you want it, just get in there and make it happen, and you can do it, and you can make it happen. You do know the world tells you that, right? Whatever you want. Look, let me tell you what the world tells you. The world will say to you, it doesn't matter if God likes it or not. It has nothing to do with God. This has to do with you getting whatever you want. You can have whatever you want. Do you want... I'll give you some instances here. How about some of these right here? Do you want fame? Do you want power? Do you want beauty? Do you want riches? Do you want a position? Do you want influence? By the way, every one of those things are what the world offers. All these things are what the world offers. You want this? Just go take it. Look, I lived most of my young adult life, well, all of my young adult life and some of my adult life, um, believing this and pursuing whatever it was that I wanted to do, whatever I wanted to do it, however I wanted to do it, and I could really care less if you liked it or not or who it hurt or who it didn't hurt. I could have really cared less because I was going to get mine. And I know none of y'all are like that. And none of you guys have ever been like that. And um, I got to tell you, I mean, frankly, I've got to be careful to not think that way today. See, because the flesh here, I still want to have my way in things. Now, again, I know none of you guys are like that. Just me. And so it's not like this thing, this kind of like this fight inside, it doesn't actually ever go all the way away because it will raise its ugly head back up and try to come at you again. Can I tell you that what the world has to offer, just... Man, come on, bro. Take advantage of situations. Do whatever you want to do. Any way you want to do it, it's okay. It's cool. You're good. You're good. Who's that going to hurt anyways? What I hear sometimes. Ain't going to hurt nobody else. The word success is defined in the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. And by the way, success is what I wanted more than anything. And I thought that success, you can define it any way you want to, but I thought it included all this stuff of this fame and power and riches and influence and position and all these things. I thought that's what, quote, unquote, success was. Did you know that that is what the world teaches the human race that success is, right? That's the reason whenever we try, uh, and it can be very difficult, and it, it can be tough whenever we try to measure ourselves, and we think in our mind that success is having money, for instance. For instance, having money being successful. We look at somebody with money, we say, well, they're successful. The devil is a liar. That is not true success, just to let you know. We look at that, and we think that, and then what we do is we go, well, I don't have that money like that, so I'm not successful. So we look at ourselves, and we, we, uh, we condemn ourselves. I just can't make it. I can't meet the mark because I don't have the kind of money they have. Anybody ever experienced anything like that? Or, again, is it just me? It could be like the fame they have, the position they have. I've been jealous of people before. I, I mean, I'm like, I'm going, man, this ain't right, you know. I mean, I, I'm more talented than they are, and they've got like that, and you know, blah, 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 right? And, and, and so it's human nature, human nature to see life this way and success this way. And success, and, and Merriam-Webster's defined as the fact of getting, now the fact, this is a fact, of getting or achieving wealth, respect, or fame. That's the definition. The fact of getting or achieving wealth, respect, or fame. And there's some synonyms I wrote down, uh, which means the same, mean the same, which would be accomplishment. This is success. Achievement, 
uh, acquirement and attainment. This is the scorecard that the world's system, now check this out, you guys. By the way, we're still talking about the path of the blessed. It's today's sermon title. Bring you back to this. We're going somewhere with what I'm talking about, right? I'm trying to get you set up so you can see something here, okay? There is a path of the blessed. And the world says this, that there's this scorecard that the world system has put in place. This success is the scorecard of your life, what the world tells you. The issue is that this is not the system God has put in place. This is the path, the path that the world says brings success, but it's not the path that God says brings success. God's system doesn't say that you're successful if you have money. God's system does not say that you're successful if you have some achievement in your life. God's system does not say that you're successful if you have position in life. Be careful if you're wanting position. God's system does not tell you that you're successful if you want influence in the earth. That is not how he looks at success. He has a different scorecard the way he looks at success. In Proverbs 14, 12, the Bible says that there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way of death. There's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Proverbs 14, 12. I think about that, and I've, I've, I've looked at, you know, you guys, some of you guys know that, for instance, I read Proverbs. I haven't missed that many days in 25 years probably of doing this. I read Proverbs 1 on, uh, on September the 1st, Proverbs 2 on September the 2nd. So there's 31 Proverbs, 31 chapters. So you can basically read that, and you can read through Proverbs every month. You know, a couple months I don't read. If there's only 30 days, I won't read Proverbs 31 that month, for instance. And um, so I've read through that every month. So 12 times a year times 25 years. How many times is that? I don't know. Quite a few times I've read through there. It's called the Book of Wisdom. You do know that, right? It was written mostly by Solomon. The, uh, that's, that's King David's son. The, David, the King David that, slide, that, 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 that he killed Goliath. You know, they, he took him out and all that. And uh, uh, Solomon was known to probably be the wisest man ever. And he wrote that book. And he wrote it to the, the people, us. He wrote it to us. So there's wisdom in there, and this is one of them. And every time I've read this for years, it's always got my attention. Because it says, it, like, it, it really does differentiate. It says, there's a way that seems right to a man. And let me say this, the path of the world. It seems right. But its end is the way of death. And I'll say this to you personally. Uh, you guys, a lot of y'all know my testimony. But I'll just say this. For me, I tried that path. That way, as it calls it. There's a way that seems right to a man. I tried it for years and years and years. And, and I tried to attain success in that way that we were just talking about. And I never could get fulfillment. I'd have a temporary buzz. I'd make a deal on something and make some money on something. But as soon as it was over with, the kind of the buzz of that was gone. And I was still looking for something else. Because, well, I was successful, but only for a moment. And, and I, I try to fill this void in me with drugs and alcohol and pornography and all the stuff that I was having issues with in my life. And I found for me that just when I, I, I read this right here, and it's like there's a way that seems right to man. I was on that way. I was thinking that was what was going to make me happy. That's what was going to give me peace. That's what was going to give me contempt. If I could just get there, wherever there was. But there kept moving on me. It never happened. I would get, seem like close, and then all of a sudden it was gone. It was like it would move on me. When I finally began to take this verse in particular uh, to heart and going, there's got to be a better way than this. There's got to be a better path in life than what I'm on right now because this is empty, man. I keep ending up empty-handed. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Finally gave up and said, you know what, I'm going to go down your road, God, instead of what I've been wanting to do my way. And I chose to go with God 
and on his path and the way that he wanted me to live my life. And I can tell you this, I found contentment straight up. I have found peace in my life. I found joy in my life. I found a place for me that now the things that used to tear me up don't tear me up no more. And it's not because I've gotten strong. Actually, I've become very weak because I surrendered. I said, I give up, actually. And whatever you want, God, it's what I want now. So you got to deal with my problems. I'll just let you have them. Can I get an amen? amen. Come on now. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. My subtitle, Do Not Love the World. You guys ready? Chapter or Verse 15 of 1 John 2. Do not love the world or the things of the world. By the way, the path of the blessed is the title of today's sermon. Do not love the way of the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, here we go, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Everybody say this with me. Say, the path of the blessed. Matthew 7, 13 says, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. I've already predetermined have you. I don't want to be one of the many. That means I'm going to have to travel on a path if I'm going to go after God and do things God's way and live a life that is going to be successful according to God's standards and not the world's standards. I'm likely going to, and I'm not likely anything. I'm going to have to travel down a narrow path. Do you know what this is implying? It means I don't get to do everything I want to do. You know what this is implying? That I'm going to have to put down all my ambitions. And I'm going to have to say, God, what is it that you have for me? Come on, have you guys done that in your life yet? Have you done it in your life? This is the best decision I ever made, was to say, God, whatever you want, that's what I want. I'm willing to walk away from my desires, from my ambitions, from my quote-unquote thought process and my goals to be successful, I'm willing to walk away, God, and do life the way you want me to do life so that I can be successful according to your way and according to your will, not my will. You know, I, we've said this before, but, you know, uh, it's such a great model prayer. Uh, you know, uh, our Father in heaven, come on, y'all help me, hallowed be thy name. Come on, what else? So, so when you start that out, it's, it's, the, it's the second part of that prayer. Thy kingdom come. Who's, who's will? Did you say my? Pardon me? Are y'all saying my will be done? Is that what you're saying? Whose will? Are you living according to what you want or what he wants? I'm asking you, you're saying it, you're, I, was, I was giving you a chance to say my will. We're in church, we, don't, we wouldn't do that, right? I can tell you this, there's going to be folks walk out of here today and they're going to go do whatever it is they want to go do. In the room, you're going to go do what you want to do, the way you want to do it, when you want to do it, because you want to, because you can. See, God is this way. God is not forceful like that. He actually gives you an opportunity to do life however you want to do life. He doesn't come down and hammer you and say, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make you do this my way. This is what's interesting. He gives you a will. That's the reason that prayer says, we say to him, thy will be done. Your will be done in my life, right here on earth as it is in heaven. And so I, I'm pointing this out, and I know that's kind of like strong, coming at you that way. It's a little bit strong in that way, but it's the truth. 
What I found is, uh, personally, in, in my life, the more that I have given up and surrendered to the will of God in my life, the better my life has become. When I tried to do everything my way, I screwed everything up, straight up. I screwed it all up, man. And I was jacked up and messed up. And I, <laughs> This side seems friendlier to me today. You were with me, weren't you, Pastor Donna? You were right there next to me. You were my problem, actually. Now y'all know how to pray for the preacher, right? <laughs> here in just a little bit, when, when, when all the lights go out and I'm here with her, and, you know. Woo. So I look at, we, 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 this is a, I like this illustration here too. Because the reality of it is, I was talking about those 16 paths, but the reality of life is very simply this. You actually, when it comes down to it, when it's between you and God, there are two paths. Let me help eliminate all the confusion. There are two paths when it comes to your life and what God has for you. The two paths are this. One is the path that you want to go down, and the other is the path that God wants you to go down. Did you know this? This is so cool. I'm not going to prove it out biblically to you today. I'm not going to show it to you in the Word of God, but you can check it out yourself. God created every one of you, men and women, Boys and girls, young and old, everyone in this room and everybody that can hear my voice on Facebook right now, he created every one of you with a very perfect, exact, specific plan for your life. You were not born by accident. You were not born on a certain day by accident. You were born on that day in that place to that mama and that daddy and that family, whoever it was, wherever it was, for a specific purpose and a reason, and it's God's purpose and reason. He has something great to do in your life. You can either choose to say, God, I want that, or I'm going to do what I want to do. He created all of us with a free will. You get to choose which path you go down. Everybody say this with me. Say the path of the blessed. James 1.12 says this. Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Did you know that we're being tempted all the time? Right? Come on, you guys. Look, if, you, if, if you're a God lover and you've given your heart to Christ, you're being tempted all the time to go a different way. All of us are. Look, if you have never given your heart all the way to Christ yet, you're being tempted all the time too. So human race, we all are being tempted all the time. And the Bible says this, and I check this, this is a blessed path. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, that does not give in to the temptation. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord promised to those who love him. And here's my point with this. I'm going to jump right on to the next verse here in just a second. But here's my point with this. There is just something about saying, God, I don't know how you're going to work this out, and I want this really bad, but today I'm going to say no to what I want, and I'm going to say, now check this out. Here's the main portion of this. And I'm going to say yes to what you want. Did you know the greatest way to get out of the temptation and the sin in your life that you may be dealing with in your life? And listen, if you say you have no sin, you are a liar. I'm sorry. I, I can prove that out biblically as well. We have stuff we deal with, all of us. Now, yours may not be as gross and ugly as mine, but it's still, for you, there are issues in your life, and we all have this we've got to deal with. My point is this. Look. The way to get out of that is to say not only no to the sin, but to say yes to God. When we say yes to God and we begin to say, you know what? I'm speaking to this sin in my life. I'm speaking to the way I've been acting or the things I've been doing. I'm saying, I'm refusing you because I'm not going your way no more. I'm going to go God's way in my life. I'm going to take the path that's more narrow, and I'm choosing to do it today, and I'm speaking to the sin in my life and saying no. Literally out loud speaking to the sin in my life and saying no to you, but I'm saying yes to you, God. The path of the blessed. You wonder why people are blessed like they are sometimes? 
Biblically, it gives you a blueprint that tells you the path to travel on. It really, really does. Everybody say this. Say, the path of the blessed. Did you know that as a Christian, you've also been grafted into the family of God? I've got a reason for saying this. Do you guys know what grafting in means? For instance, you can take, uh, I'll just use an easy example. You can take a, a green apple and a red apple. A, a, a tree will grow red apples, and then you have a tree next to it that grows green apples. You can actually cut off one of the branches off of the green apple tree. You can prune it properly. You can cut a slit down into the, uh, into the trunk uh, of the red apple tree. You can slide that branch down in there, and it will begin to take on the life of the red apple tree. And it, it, it'll begin to live off of the red apple tree. And it will begin to, now, it's actually separated from where it came from, and now it's been grafted in to the red apple tree. It's a green apple, but it's been grafted in. So now it begins to take on the nature of the red apple tree because that's its root now. That's where it gets its nourishment from. That's where it gets uh, its life from. As a born-again Christian, you have been grafted into God's family. You're now part of the house of God. You know, we call this the house of God. This is a physical building. Much, much greater than that, you've actually been grafted in to God's family. You're part of his house now. Did you know that the Bible calls you a joint heir with Jesus Christ? When God sees you, he sees you like he sees Jesus. You're one of his boys or you're one of his girls. Is that amazing or what? So cool. So cool. And I think about that and... Because of that, and the Bible says that, by the way, it uses the words you have been grafted in. Not, those aren't my words. He tells us this. And because of that, you and I now share the inheritance and the promises that God has promised to his people. This is one of the coolest things. When I got the understanding of this years ago, and, and I didn't get it from a preacher or anything. I got it just by reading the word of God. And uh, when I began to realize, because I, I would read the Old Testament, I'm going like, that's some pretty cool old stories. And, 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 I would, and I'd go over to the New Testament, it's like, now that's talking to me today, kind of the New Testament, you know, when I read that part over there. It was written after Jesus. And, and, but the Old Testament was before. And it's like these stories of the, you know, of the Jewish people uh, of Israel and the kingdom, this, this kingdom of the Israelites and all this stuff and, and, and God's people protecting his people and all these miracles that happened, you know, at the Red Sea to the Israelites, God's people. And, and I began to, as I read that, I began to realize and, and, uh, that that's actually everything that he promised all those guys back then, those are my promises. You know why? Because he sees me exactly like them because I'm just kids just like they are of his. I belong to the kingdom of God just as much as any Jew does. We've been grafted into the family. Every one of the promises that he made to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph, and Moses, and Abraham, all the guys too, and then he made to Jesus, and Jesus' promise, all this stuff, it belongs to me because I've been grafted into the family. And just like when I read those, he would tell them, here's what he'd do with them. Go this way, don't go that way. Travel this path, don't travel that path. I'm going to warn you, there's bad, there's booger man over there. Don't go over there. This is something good. Here's the promised land over here. And what did they do a lot of times? Oh, I want to go do what I want to go do. See, my way's better. This is good. I, I know how to work this deal. Okay. So we've been grafted in. The promises that were made, to the, to, and by the way, I'm going to do this. Let me, let me spend another moment or two on this. So the reason why, the reason why is because God cut covenant with those people. 
There was a blood covenant. That's why all those animals were sacrificed, had to do with covenant. Everybody say covenant. covenant. It's a good word to study out. You'll, get, you'll probably get some understanding studying that word out, the word covenant. And so God cut a covenant with these people, and what the covenant said was this. Here's the deal. You give me everything of you, here's what God said to him, and I'll give you all of me. You give me everything that you have, and I'll give you everything I have. And we'll be in covenant together. We'll come together as one. That's what covenant marriage, come together as one. This covenant, you cut covenant. By the way, without blood, there is no covenant. That's all these animals that shed the blood. Now move forward a little bit, and here's what happened. We were not in covenant with God because we were the Gentiles. You, look at your neighbor and say, you were an old Gentile. Look at your other neighbor and say, real old. No, you don't do that. You were a Gentile. Now listen, this is what's cool. Covenant was cut with the old uh, Israel, with the people of old, through the blood. And whenever, the reason that God sent Christ into the earth, the primary reason he sent him was because we were not in covenant with God. There was no way for us to be in covenant with God Almighty. The Gentiles, that's most of us in the room, unless you're uh, from Israel, you're an Israelite. So we were out. We were not part of the family. We couldn't get to God, the Father. What he did was he said, I'm going to make a way for you to come to me and have a personal relationship with me, the Father. So what he did was he knew that without the shedding of blood, there could not be a covenant, right? right. That's part of the way, the way he set it all up. So he sent Christ into the earth. Do you know why we trip out and freak out and have such a big time and party whenever we talk about the blood of Jesus Christ? Because it's through the blood of Christ that he shed at Calvary that we have, it's been made a way for us to have access to the Father through the new covenant. And the new covenant, now check this out. The Old Testament represents the Old Covenant. The New Covenant represents the New Covenant. And here's what God said. This New Covenant through the blood of Christ is not only, it, doesn't, it, doesn't, it, it, it fulfills all the law of the Old, but it's even better than what the Old was. Why are you saying all that, Pastor Mark, and being so passionate about all that and yelling at us and all that? Because <laughs> it's such a big deal. For, for, for all of us to get. Today we're talking about the path of the blessed. Listen, the reason that we should follow God's ways in our life is because he's made a way, he's made covenant with us, and here's what he did. When he gave Christ, he said, here's the deal. I'm going to change it up a little bit. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give something to you, and all I want from you is, and I'm, I'm going to give you everything I have. I'm going to give you my very, very best. I'm going to give you my son. And I'm going to give you provision so you can be part of my house. And here's what I want from you. It's real simple. I want all of you. What a deal. Jesus said it like this in John 10.10. 10. He said that the devil comes but to steal and to kill and destroy. But I've come to give you life and life more abundantly. And this life more abundantly, when we look at that and we break that down, it represents, now check this out, it represents the path of the blessed. It means that you're blessed whether no matter what's going on. It means he makes a way for you. You can be going through all kinds of junk in your life. There can be all hell breaking loose against you. But there's something going on on the inside of you that you're going, my daddy's going to handle all this. And, 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 and he does somehow. And it may not be the way you want it handled, but it's a better way. It's the path of the blessed. And you quit tripping and worrying about everything. Because you don't, you, you're not in control. In fact, it's not your way, it's his way. And whatever he wants, that's what I want. So I don't really care what happens, actually. I want something good, but as far as when it comes down to the nitty-gritty, I want whatever it is he wants. So if it's not going the way I want it to go, I'm going to say, God, rock on, man, let's go. However you want it, I'm in. It's such a great way to live, it's such a peaceable way. Deuteronomy I've got two more scriptures for you. I'm just going to read them both real quick for you. Uh, Steve, or uh, if you don't mind coming on back up. Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm going to read you uh, five verses here, verses 15 through 20. Deuteronomy 30, 15 through 20. How's everybody doing? All right. The word says this. By the way, this is God's, this is God talking. See, 
I've set before you today life and good, death and evil, and that I command you today to love the Lord your God. By the way, this is covenant. To love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways or on his path, and to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments. The reason why is that you may live and multiply. And the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. Verse 17, but if your heart turns away, I'll say it like this, and goes its own way, so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods, money, job, position, titles, fame, and serve them, I announce to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days. You'll cut your own life short in the land which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. Verse 19. When God says this, it's pretty intense. I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you. And he does this with us. It's covenant. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God and that you may obey his voice and that you may cling to him and he, for he is your life and the strength of your days and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to give to them. There is a land that you as a born-again Christian are to be living in. You're to be living in the land that was promised to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. It's the promised land. There's a heaven on earth that we're to be living in. Doesn't mean you do not have problems. That's not what it means at all. It means that you live your life as an overcomer of the issues of life. That you've got your head up. That you've got your trust and your hope in God. That you're not sucked down in the wind and all the life sucked out of you every time something runs at you. That you keep your faith and you keep your hope in God. It's the promise of God. It's the land of, of, of this promise that he promised to the people. It's for us. Who chooses which way we go? Man, I would choose it for you if I could because I'm experiencing it myself personally. Doesn't mean that I don't mess up and no. But I know this. I already know. I already know the path. Look, it's, it's almost like this. This is, this is how I look at it for me personally, and it may help somebody in the room. I've already decided to go whichever way God wants me to go. And whenever I'm headed that way and something distracts me or I get off path or I make a mistake, I make a wrong choice, here's what I've learned to do. I've, been, I've, been, I've learned to be quick to repent. Quick to repent. Get over here, get doing my thing. Like, oh, uh. And I begin to realize, and the Holy Spirit, by the way, he'll always help you. He'll always remind you which way you're headed here. Oh, uh, Father, I'm sorry about that. Let me get back. Let me get back over here and just keep going. Not condemned. Not found guilty and condemned and struck down. Praise God, we've got a Father that's filled full of mercy and grace for us. When we miss it, He's right there. All we got to do is turn right back to Him. Turn directions. Everybody say the path of the blessed. One more scripture. I'll read it and we'll be done here. This is Joshua 24, 15. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Again, this is a covenant God. Whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Have you determined that in your life? Come on, church. Have you determined that in your life? I praise God that Pastor Don and I determined that a long time ago. It's for us in our house, we're going to serve the Lord. There's not another option. We've already signed up. We've already received Christ. And through the blood of Christ, we've been made right with God and found righteousness uh, in Christ through the blood of Christ. You know what righteousness means? It means right standing with God. Through the blood of Christ, when we accept that and what was done there, God finds us righteous or made right with God. And our responsibility is to continue to live that way. Does righteous mean perfect? No. 
It means a soft heart. It means a, a, an obedient heart. It means a heart that chases after God with everything you have and saying, I want what you want, God, whatever that is. I don't care where you send me. I don't care what you tell me to do. I don't care what you tell me not to do. I don't care what it looks like or doesn't look like. I don't care who likes it or doesn't like it. I'm going to go with you, God, no matter what. I'm going to chase God. You guys ever hear the book? It was Tommy Tenney wrote. It's called God Chasers. That book rocked my world, man. That book rocked me big time. Because I'm going, man, I've been chasing after all kinds of crap. I don't care who you are, how long you've been in church, this should be for you. Listen, likely we've got something that we've made real important in our life that doesn't have anything to do with God and what he wants for us. It may be your TV or your phone or him or her or shall I go on you name yours here's what I want to do right now and I'm going to close with this I want to encourage all of you today I want to encourage you in this way no matter where you find yourself right now on the path no matter how far you've gone down this path of what you wanted to do it doesn't matter at all today no matter how far you see yourself is gone it's, there's always time and there's always a place for you to turn around and go get back on the right path with God. Now listen, that time and that place is right here and right now. You don't even have to wait till later to get it done. You can do it right now. Just turn around and you're going you're gonna to go to God and say, God, I'm sorry I missed that. I want to do what you want me to do. And guess what? He will pick you up and place you right back where you're supposed to be in the place of righteousness. Let it go. Decide you're going to let it go today and move into what God has for you for today and the rest of the day and tomorrow. It's a decision that you make. It's a path that you choose. There is a path of the blessed. You've just got to choose it. He wants it for you. He's got it set up for you. You've got to choose it. I want to pray for you now. If you will, bow your head and close your eyes. Father, I thank you for everybody that's in the room today and those watching. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, we ask you to take the words, I specifically ask you to take the words that were spoken today that are from you and cause them to penetrate the hearts of every person that can hear my voice right now, God. Lord, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you begin to deal with us in the room, those watching, by the authority that's in Jesus' name, that there would become, a Lord, a, a, a Holy Ghost conviction that we would see ourselves. No condemnation in you, God, but a conviction that comes, Lord, that we realize, God, that there's areas that we need to come back to you in. Father, I thank you that you're a loving God. That you don't push us away ever. That you're always trying to pull us to you. You're always drawing us to you. Father, I thank you that there is no condemnation in you, God. I thank you, Father, that your word says that those that you love, you correct. So if that's you today, if you sense the Holy Spirit adjusting you right now, come on, don't be hard-hearted. Allow him to do his work in you. Allow him that space in your life. Allow him to help you to move closer to him, to put things down and to walk away from things you know that you don't want, he doesn't want for you, that's not the plan for you. I thank you that there's nothing too hard for you at all. No matter how we've missed it or where we've missed it, there is nothing too hard for you. You're just waiting on us to turn towards you and come to you. And you accept us just as we are. 
Father, I thank you that we don't have to get cleaned up and we don't have to get things just right, but we can come to you as we are. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you that you see every heart, that you see every problem represented in this room today, that you see every one of us where we're actually at, that you know us, and even with all that, you love us and you care for us. said in your word that the love of God, the perfect love of God will cast out all fear. So right now, the areas of your life that you're dealing with fear of letting go of something and going for God with everything, I declare over you, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I bind fear right now from you making this move in your life right now. If the Holy Spirit is tugging on your heart right now, do not resist that, friend. That's the love of God coming to you. If that's you and you say, you know, I need to pray, I need to get back on track, I want to get on track in an area in my life, I don't care if you've been in the church your whole life. If that's you, I want to pray for you. Let me see your hands real quick. Let me see hands. Anybody else? I see hands around the room. Okay, you can put them back down. Anybody else? Anybody else? Okay, maybe you needed to raise your hand. Okay, I see your hand. Maybe you needed to raise your hand and you didn't. I'm going to lead all y'all in a prayer, a prayer of recommitment to God. And look, this may be the first time you've ever committed your whole life to him. And it may be the first time you ever said, I want to follow you, God. I don't want to go my way. I want to go your way, God. Look, if you'll pray this prayer, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. You can repeat it after me. If you'll pray the prayer and mean it from the bottom of your heart and commit yourself to him and say, God, I do want to follow you forever. I want to go down the path of the blessed that you've prepared for me. If you'll do that today, the Bible says this, if you'll call on his name and confess your sins, that he will save you. That means that he will accept you into the family right where you're at today. I want everybody to pray this prayer after me. And those of you maybe didn't raise your hand, let's say it in support of those that did. And you know who you are if you need to say this prayer. This is not between me and you. This is between you and God. So let this be your heart to him. Say this with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I've been going down my own path, and I realize that you have something better for me. So today, I ask you to forgive me, and I choose to get on the path that you've designed for me. Jesus, I invite you in. And today, I decide to begin to follow you and give you my heart. I ask you, Jesus, to be the Lord of my life. Today, I surrender and I ask you to have your way in my life. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to chase after you all the way into eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Awesome, you guys. All right. So listen, if you made that commitment today, if you made that commitment today, enemy will come to you later today, likely, and try to tell you, ah, that didn't really happen like that. Here's what you do. You guys ready? I'm giving you some coaching. So this is post-sermon coaching, okay? When the, when the enemy comes in and says, ah, that didn't really happen to you today, or whatever that words might be, kind of discourage you, you say to the devil, I have submitted my life to God, and I say no to you, devil. Yes, I did. And I'm on my way. I'm going to follow God from now on. Come on, you guys. Y'all can do this. Y'all can do this. But listen, I love y'all. Um, we look forward to what God's doing here in the church.
There's great things happening here at the church. We'll be making some new announcements in the near future. Good stuff going on. And we love y'all. Y'all go out and have a super blessed week this week. And we'll see you real soon. God bless y'all.